the first thing that I kind of wanted to touch on just very briefly here is um, something that drags down, uh, at least in some capacity, every single platoon is, as long as it's happening. And that is um, that that is getting uh, double teamed and uh, having it be the major talking point in platoon chat. Could you de uh, could you argue that VS gets double teamed more than the other two factions? Sure. However, this is a, it's a three faction game. Everyone by definition is getting double teamed at some point during the day. So it's it, it's definitely something to mention to your platoon when it's happening, when you see it's happening. But if it's all the platoon talks about for the uh, last 10 to 15 minutes of the alert, how you know you lost because you got double teamed and you know there, there's nothing to do, you are going to drag down the morale of the platoon down to near zero levels. Um, there there is going to be you know, a low feeling going in. So mention it, but maybe don't dwell on it and uh, maybe try to do something to pick the mood of the platoon back up. Th this is going to be the only um, necessarily mechanic uh, or the, the only necessarily in game in platoon aspect that I'm touching on during this talk here. Um, but you know, maybe maybe set another objective that's not necessarily winning the alert once you realize that this is going on. Like, say, okay, guys, we're not winning the alert, but let's warp gate the TR. Yeah, set, set an objective that ignores the game, but gives people something to work towards that is maybe a bit more feasible and you can have fun with. Even if it's just as... Even if it's as simple as, guys, let's go set up a good farm somewhere and uh, wait this alert out and uh, uh, do strong on the next one. P uh, getting burnt out because you are you know, getting double teamed for the entire alert is a very real thing that's going to happen, but it can be mitigated. And if you are leading the platoon, even if you're not leading the platoon, uh, maybe even suggesting it. That, that, hey, let's just uh, call this one in and do something fun and come back to the next one. Yeah, it, it, it'll it'll help. It, it will help. Um, as for the next point here, um, there there are some trip up points that I've uh, seen in. Uh, platoon leads and this one's going to be more geared towards people who want to actively lead platoons want, want to um actively uh, look into uh you know being platoon lead on a day-to-day -day basis and um the first platoon the, the the first point here the the important point for you know keeping the morale of a platoon is going to be right at the uh, platoon handover. If you're taking the platoon over from someone else, uh, you need to uh, be looking at that and asking yourself a couple questions here. Like, what was this platoon doing before I jumped in and took it over? Now, you know, nine times out of 10, this isn't going to be an issue because you probably have were in the platoon for a little while to begin with. But I have personally made the mistake of uh, jumping in, being in a platoon for 10 minutes, and then um volunteering eagerly to take it over and it ended up being an armor column platoon <laughs> and i had at that point never once never once ran in an armor column i had never led an armor column i would have been completely out of my depth uh, so i just told everyone hey guys uh, i'm i'm going to lead but i cannot do an armor column if we actually want to win this alert it will go poorly. We are just going to go hammer at it with the infantry. And we are, we, I, we ended up winning that alert, I believe. But, you know, uh, someone approached me about 45 minutes into the alert 
saying like, hey, I was really, really worried when you took over the Splatoon. We had a full armor column already set up and you just had us dismantle the entire thing. So that, I mean, it, it is a definite worry. If your platoon leadership style differs very, very heavily from the person you have taken the platoon over from, there is going to be a bit of friction. There will probably might be people leaving. There might be people uh, thinking, hey, this old way was better. Let's go back to this. They might say that to you uh, in the platoon chat. And uh, it's on you to deal with um, things like that that crop up on a case by case basis. But you can definitely make the transition smoother by thinking, OK, what kind of platoon am I taking over? What can I do to what can I do to assuage people's uh, anxieties if my leadership is very, very different than the person I've taken it over? I take over a lot of uh, a lot of go hard platoon ops just because of when I start playing. I start playing normally around the uh, l shift into late night uh, from from prime time where we have a bunch of uh, people who have been used to a very, very organized, very regimented, uh, very go here, do this, go here, do this platoon. And my platoons are very, very chill, very relaxed and more geared towards late night play where we're not necessarily playing to, you know, play perfect operations. We are playing but we are we are playing to have a good time until it's two in the morning and we all have to go to bed. An another trip up that you can easily avoid while leading your platoon uh, to keep morale up is avoid getting bogged down and uh, bogged down in fights for extended periods of time. And if you are looking at the map and saying getting bogged down in this fight is the best option explaining to your platoon why this is the best option. Um, people don't really like seeing... Um, they, they don't like thinking that they are not making progress, uh, just bashing their heads against a brick wall over and over and over again with no reason whatsoever. Uh, they'll get frustrated. They'll get uh, a little nettled. They'll get salty about it and uh, probably think that you are not paying attention to the map at all. But sometimes uh, drawing population into that extended fight and keeping them there is getting people on other maps a lot of play. Like if you get bogged down in our calm for 15 minutes, well, that's that ended up being a winning play. If you if elsewhere on the map, uh, they took three different bases from the same faction because they threw 96 plus people at Endarcom to make sure you didn't get it. I mean, you don't feel like you've done anything, but the map definitely shows that that play was worthwhile. And you have it if you're platoon leading, it's your responsibility to make sure people know why they're fighting in this bogged down fight. Yeah, I mean, th that is something where you can definitely make sure people are not getting necessarily getting upset and maybe looking at it like it's uh, an opportunity to farm. Even if you're getting farmed, if you're just crashing into the point over and over and you are not making headway whatsoever, you are personally getting farmed. You are getting destroyed on Endar Kamare. If you've taken three, four bases because 96 uh, plus people are at Endar Kamare stopping you, that's that's a winning play. You may have just won an alert off of that. Um, another leading trip up, and this this one comes up in talks with uh, the brood lords uh, every so often. Is um, you know when is it okay to uh, when when is it okay to kick someone if if they are you know questioning me if they are uh, challenging me when is it okay to uh, when when should I just kick the person and that is entirely up to you if you are platoon lead um that that is you know what what is your breaking point but you can't just be looking at your breaking point is 
some sort of excessive arguing in the platoon chat about what to do or about do this, do that. Is it causing, is it causing morale to drop in the platoon itself? Are people, I mean, people don't like listening to uh, people complain. They, they just don't. Um, at, at that point, yes, I would absolutely recommend maybe uh, giving giving the person like one warning and if they don't shape up, yeah, just, just kick them, get rid of them. It's uh, not going to, uh, they're not going to uh, listen. Uh, they're not going to calm down on it. Um, maybe they need to go take a breather. Um, if, I mean, if you kick every single person who tries to give you advice, you're not going to look too, too favorably in the eyes of your platoon. And if you're not platoon lead, um, uh, you know, squad leads can still kick people. But if you're, if you are not platoon lead, you're not squad lead. May, at that point, you can still speak up and say, hey, I don't want to listen to, uh, all of this argumentative nonsense in chat. I am I'm here after a long day's work. I just want to uh, kill people who are wearing red, and that that's all. That's what I want to do this evening. I I don't want to listen to how you guys argue. If you guys uh, want to argue, I'm just gonna take my ball, go home, go to a bio lab, and just farm it out. I sometimes you have to make the hard call there. Um. As for, um, you know, the, the platoon chat, I mean, this is something for everyone to keep in mind. When you are in a platoon chat, a question that you should be just keep in the back of your mind, not necessarily keep a con, you know, a conscious effort, but definitely just in the very back of your mind. If I were a new player, if I, if I were a new player and I were here, you know, participating in this in this platoon the this skl tagged platoon would i want to play with skl again and if, if the answer is yes you're golden if the answer is eh, then it's a question of what what can you do to make that a better experience because you know, we, we are starting to have this uh, very real shift towards a uh, new player engagement. And I think uh, I think a lot of uh, mentor platoons during the off hours are on the way. I, I think I might start leading some. But um, even if you are not interacting with, you know, new players, you might be interacting with a player who's a uh, battle rank 30 battle rank 40 and it's their first time in an skl platoon they want to see what's up and uh if it's if it's not going to be a good environment for them they're just not going to play with skl again um a couple examples i mean i'm not going to name any names here but i when i was uh starting out playing this game I had a really bad experience with uh, someone in an SKL platoon, and uh, I made the conscious decision. Well, uh, I like SKL. I have enjoyed playing with SKL so far, but I'm not going to play a platoon that he's leading anymore because uh, he he was mean to me. And um, that issue, I, I mean, it, it got resolved eventually, but a lot of new players aren't going to... Uh, you know, maybe put in the effort to uh, get such and such things resolved. I have a a few examples, a few things like uh, k uh, kicking someone and then um, complaining about that person's behavior for 10, 15 minutes after kicking them. I mean, I, I wouldn't if I were a new player starting, I maybe would give pause to thinking about playing with that person again. Things things like that. Um, just keep it upbeat and keep it positive in the platoon, and I think you are going to be fine. You know, keep it fun and look for ways in which to have fun. If, um, if winning the alert isn't necessarily something that can be done. Um, I'd 
I'm going to take uh, just one quick second off of microphone, and uh, then I would like to uh, maybe uh, take questions if anyone has any. Give me one second here. 